The story opens up with a guy named Ida peacefully dozing off on the couch in his living room, lost in a dream where he battled a raging dragon. Startled by someone calling his name, he tumbled off the sofa only to find his childhood best friend, Chiwa Harusaki, by his side. Curious about the loud noise from Ida's house, Chiwa rushed in to check on him. Assured that everything was fine, she immediately turned her attention to dinner plans as the evening was approaching. Unfortunately, Ida's kitchen supplies were running low, but Chiwa insisted on accompanying him to the market. Reluctantly, Ida gave in to her persistent request, realizing he had no other choice. At the market, Chiwa commented on how Ida seemed different lately. She suggested he take a break from studying since he already achieved the highest scores in their recent tests. However, Ida explained that his academic success isn't his ultimate goal. During their dinner, Ida continued studying prompting Chiwa to inquire if there were easier schools to get into. But Ida refused to settle for mediocrity, driven by the high costs of medical school, and not wanting to burden his aunt, Siko. After dinner, Ida washed the dishes while Chiwa entertained herself with a magazine. Out of the blue, she mentioned a girl named Natsukawa Masuzu from their class, praising her beauty. However, Ida remained disinterested in Chiwa's topic of conversation. The next day, Ida recited his usual daily reminders, prioritize studying, avoid unnecessary and dangerous love, and be cautious not to be misconstrued as gay. As he prepared for the day, he noticed Siko sleeping on the sofa. On their way to school, Chiwa chatted incessantly about wanting to be popular among guys, even seeking Ida's opinion on her new clip-ons. Ida, uninterested and oblivious to these matters, irritated Chiwa. In the classroom, a male classmate named Kioru informed Ida that Chiwa had been sent to the disciplinary office for causing a disturbance by loudly proclaiming her admiration for Ida. Feeling exasperated with Chiwa's behavior, Ida dismissed it and shrugged it off. Ida questioned Kaoru about why everyone seemed preoccupied with love, but Kaoru claimed that anti-love individuals like Ida are rare. Then, Kaoru abruptly asked Ida if his parents had ever reached out to him. Ida, harboring deep resentment since his parents had abandoned him in middle school to pursue new relationships, rejected the notion of them being his parents and despised love as a result. When their homeroom teacher arrived, she rearranged the seating assignments, and to Ida's surprise, Masuzu approached him and sat beside him. Ida couldn't help but steal glances at her, while their classmates were envious of his proximity to the school's most popular and stunning girl. Ida's main goals were securing a recommendation from his high school for admission to a public institution and earning a sponsored scholarship for medical school. However, after class, Masuzu approached Ida and publicly confessed her liking for him, causing a stir among their peers. Alone together, Ida confronted Masuzu about her intentions. Initially, Masuzu tried to keep it a secret but eventually revealed her motive. She grew weary of constant requests for dates and revealed her disdain for love. This left Ida wondering about the source of her intense emotions. Suddenly, Masuzu produced a notepad from her bag and began reading immature and embarrassing stories, which Ida recognized as his own. Witnessing Ida's reaction, Masuzu resorted to blackmail, threatening to expose his stories unless he complied with her plans. She even had a copy saved on her computer, faced with potential humiliation. Ida reluctantly agreed to comply with Masuzu's demands. As the sun descended on their journey home, Chiwa rushed towards Ida and Masuzu, bursting out in exclamation about Ida keeping his relationship with Masuzu a secret from her. She expressed her disappointment, stating that as his closest childhood friend, she should have been informed about it. Masuzu intervened, introducing herself and surprising everyone by grabbing Ida's arm, suggesting they go on a date. Chiwa, with a mix of indescribable emotions in her eyes, watched as Ida and Masuzu walked away together. The following day, during lunch, Kioru and Ida sat together and discussed their surprise over Ida dating someone, despite his anti-love stance. Ida confessed his initial surprise as well but shared how he had come to understand the difficulties Masuzu faced in her daily life. Being the subject of gossip and constantly being scrutinized by others was an uncomfortable position to be in. Kaoru suddenly asked if Chiwa had come to school that day, but Ida was uncertain as Chiwa had grown distant since he started dating Masuzu. Upon hearing this from Ada, Kaoru encouraged Ida to resolve his differences with Chiwa since she was like family to him. On their way home, as Masuzu and Ida were together, Ida wanted to share something with Masuzu, but she already knew what he was going to say. Ida apologized, and Masuzu appreciated his sincerity. Ida informed Masuzu that Chiwa desired to become popular at school prompting Masuzu to ask Ida to bring Chiwa to her the next day. She advised him to look forward to it. 
The next morning, Ida took Chiwa to a room where Masuzu, dressed in a kimono and holding a fan, portrayed elegance. When Masuzu learned that Chiwa was struggling to attract male attention, she offered to help and shared her own fabricated love story to convince Chiwa. Initially declining Masuzu's offer, Chiwa eventually agreed. Masuzu decided to create a club to teach young women proper etiquette and manners, redefining what it meant to be a refined and elegant lady. Chiwa liked the name of the club, but Ida did not share the same enthusiasm. Chiwa and Masuzu set a goal to get close to Sakagami, a third-year basketball player. To achieve this, Chiwa had to befriend Sakagami's brother and pretend to be a guitarist. However, their plan didn't go as intended, and Chiwa's performance with the guitar case resulted in strange and inexplicable gestures. During a private moment in the club room, Masuzu questioned Ida about his constant presence around Chiwa. He explained that they had been childhood friends and lived next door to each other. Masuzu anticipated that Chiwa would leave the club after their embarrassing classroom incident. But to her surprise, Chiwa returned, calmly enjoying tea without a trace of sadness. According to Ida, Chiwa would not leave the club on her own until she fulfilled her goal. He shared the story of Chiwa in middle school when she was expected to be the star of the kendo team but suffered an accident that severely affected her hip. After extensive rehabilitation, she recovered to a point where it no longer hindered her daily life, but she could no longer participate in sports. She had lost sight of her previous goal but had now found something new to pour her heart into, determined not to give up. Nasuzu finally found answers to her questions but reminded Ada not to forget that he belonged to her. Masuzu advised Chiwa to confess to Sakagami since she was quite confident that he already knew things about Chiwa from her prior actions. Chiwa was hesitant at first, but eventually agreed to it. On the other hand, Ida was concerned about her and unsure if the strategy was good, but still supported her decision. Chiwa left a letter on Sakagami's shoe locker inviting him to meet her on the rooftop to confess. At the rooftop, Chiwa was watching the sun as it set when she saw Sakagami smile as he walked towards her. He started talking about what he had heard about her before her previous actions, believing it was intriguing and cool. He liked girls like that. He then invited Chiwa to see a movie on Sunday with him to get to know her better. Nesuzu couldn't stop smiling as they walked back home since their plan had worked out perfectly. Everything went perfectly for their first victory. Ida's journal, often known as her first love's journal, served as the foundation for her strategy. He then began to mock him by stating he should be happier, but he dismissed it by saying it had nothing to do with him. On the other hand, Chiwa began to express that she honestly believed the person who wrote Masuzu's first love journal was great, not realizing that the owner of the journal was Ida. Chiwa thought that it was amazing that he believed all of those things without feeling embarrassed. Hearing those things from Chiwa made Ida wonder how those things sounded cool to others, but were a blot on his past. At dinner time, Ida prepared a large amount of food to celebrate Chiwa's accomplishment. Seeing how comfortable and pleased Ida was about her going on a date with a man made her worry about how happy he was with it. When Ida landed his eyes on Chiwa, he was perplexed by her actions and wondered why she was being sad when she had worked so hard for it. Chiwa burst into tears and mocked Ida as a jerk, wishing she hadn't known him at all. He rushed out of his house with tears flowing from her eyes. All of this was because she wanted Ida to be upset about her dating other men. She felt something more for him and wanted him to see her as a grown lady, not a younger sister. A flashback from Ida and Chiwa's past was shown when Chiwa returned from the hospital after the accident. She rushed to his house to visit him and check on him, although she was not entirely recovered from the accident. She was curious about Ida's well-being because his parents had recently divorced and abandoned him to pursue other relationships. While eating dinner, they discussed their new goals the moment they entered high school. Chiwa stated that she would set new goals because she would be unable to do kendo, while Ida planned to study more and earn good grades to get into a medical university and become a doctor to treat Chiwa's damage from the accident. Chiwa burst into tears just hearing those words from her. She never imagined he would be thinking of such things. On the following Sunday, Chiwa arrived earlier than Sakagami at the appointed place. But for some reason, Ida felt that something was off about their date, so he came to watch over Chihua. He didn't want anything bad to happen to his close friend. Not long after, Masuzu came to see Chiwa's first date. But after waiting for hours, Sakagami never came. He turns out to be dating another woman not far from Chiwa. He purposely didn't meet Chiwa because he just wanted to prank her. She was nothing more than a stake for Sakagami and his friends. As if that wasn't enough, they mocked and humiliated her without the slightest sense of guilt. Ida rushed to save Chiwa even though Masuzu tried to stop him. But he comes in a silly way like a character in a video game. 
Even more ridiculous, Ida was beaten by Sakagami and his friends for disturbing their fun. At this point, Chiwa didn't stay still. She attacked Sakagami and his friends with sticks until they ran away, saved Chiwa, and ended up being saved by her. Worse, he was battered. The next day, Masuzu doesn't go to school, and Ida plans to visit his fake girlfriend. But unexpectedly, he met her on the street. He then thanked Masuzu for giving Chiwa the stick yesterday, so she could save him when he was beaten. Unexpectedly, Masuzu admired Ida, who sincerely wanted to help others selflessly. She then presents him with a kiss. But the funny thing is, after that, she told him to drink the sewage water because he had kissed her. The next day, Ida is surprised by the arrival of Masuzu and Chiwa at his house. The two of them are still competing for him no matter what. On a typical school day, Ida stumbled upon an anonymous confession letter in his shoe locker. The letter expressed admiration and a desire to reconnect with their past connection. Unsure of the sender's identity, Ida confided in his friend Kaoru, who speculated that Chiwa might be behind the letter. Intrigued, Chiwa attempted to draw Ida away from the club room, only to be accused by Masuzu of attempting to steal her boyfriend. To promote their club and attract new members, Masuzu proposed the idea of creating a theme song. While checking his shoe locker, Ida discovered another letter from the same person who had confessed before. The letter urged him to acknowledge their feelings and assured him of their enduring connection. Ida carefully concealed the note in his pocket when Masuzu unexpectedly joined him, hoping to keep it a secret from her. During their walk home together, Masuzu broke the silence and questioned Ida about whether he was hiding something from her. Taken aback, Ida sought clarification. Masuzu then confronted him about his supposed infatuation with Chiwa in the club room. Succumbing to her controlling nature, Masuzu moved closer and demanded that Ida refrain from paying attention to other girls when they were together. At Chiwa's house, Ida is asked by Chiwa's mom to take care of Chiwa as she goes to work. Chiwa had caught a fever after rushing home in the rain. When Chiwa wakes up in her bedroom, she finds Ida there. Surprisingly, she requested his help in wiping her body, and despite the awkwardness, Ida agreed. Later, Ida noticed a pair of chopsticks in her room which turned out to be his. Chiwa confessed to taking them without permission. Those chopsticks symbolized her cherished memories, which remained unchanged regardless of whether Ida had a girlfriend or fell in love with someone else. Ida realized that Chiwa was not the sender of the confession letters. Their connection did not need restoration because it had never been broken. It had always been there. The next morning, Chiwa visited Ida's house and asked him to walk to school with her. At school, Ida spotted Masuzu near the shoe lockers and inquired about her well-being. Masuzu ridiculed him, mentioning how she had barked loudly earlier while trying to secure her boyfriend. In haste, Ida discovered another love letter in his shoe locker and swiftly closed it. As he read the letter, the sender requested a meeting on the rooftop. Ida meets a Kishino Himiko, a black-haired girl with a ponytail, on the rooftop. It is revealed that she is the girl he previously played video games with. Himiko approaches Ida and hugs him, while Chiwa and Masuzu appear, appearing annoyed by what they see. Heimka surprised Ida and Chiwa by revealing herself as Ida's previous romantic partner, catching them off guard with this unknown fact. Chiwa introduced herself as Ida's childhood friend, and Masuzu claimed to be his girlfriend. Heimka expressed her displeasure at the thought of Ida being with another girl, insisting that he should only hug her. The next day, Ida found Heimka and Masuzu talking in the club room. Masuzu had invited Heimka for tea to exchange information about Ida and even considered inviting her to join the club. Chiwa objected, arguing that Heimka only cared about Ida and not about the club's main purpose of becoming popular. She emphasized that her concern for Ida motivated her to join, eliminating any distinction. Masuzu then gave Heimka a notepad and asked her to write a poem about the kind of maiden she aspired to be if she wanted to join the club. Chiwa interjected, suggesting the need for a practical exam as well. While taking the practical test in the hallway, Heimka suddenly fainted, and the hall monitors intervened, taking Chiwa and Masuzu away. On their day off, Masuzu, Ida, and Chiwa were assigned to clean the school as punishment. Suddenly, a black car arrived, and Mana, Masuzu's sister, stepped out. She apologized for their failed conversation with their father, who was furious and demanded Masuzu's immediate return home. To prevent further trouble, Masuzu abruptly ended her relationship with Ida and decided to go back with Mana. As Masuzu went to change, Chiwa followed her to seek an explanation for her sudden decision. Later, Heimka excitedly approached Ida, informing him that she had completed her vision. Even though she didn't have to hand it in on their day off, she did so because she wanted to spend the day doing different activities with everyone. Suddenly, Mana snatched Heimka's work and showed curiosity about the club Masuzu had created. 
Despite Ida's attempts to retrieve Heimka's work, Mana's security intervened, pushing him away. As Mana read Heimka's work, she laughed at its childishness, causing Heimka to cry. Ida couldn't bear it any longer and yelled at Mana to stop mocking people's fantasies. He believed that these dreams served as an escape from the hardships of reality. Though he tried to approach Mana, her security kept him at bay. Ida demanded that Mana apologize to Heimka when Mesuzu returned with Chiwa. Mesuzu told Mana to stop bothering Ida and Heimka, stating they had done nothing wrong. In a pivotal moment, Heimka speaks up, expressing that she had finally found a place where she felt accepted and wanted to join the club alongside Mesuzu and Chiwa. Her words inspired her fellow club members and convinced Mesuzu to change her mind. Mesuzu gladly accepted Heimka's request, warmly welcoming her into the club. Ida wakes up in the infirmary, startled by the sound of his name being shouted. As he opens his eyes, he finds Heimka lying naked next to him, while Chiwa and Mesuzu call out to him. Heimka tries to calm Ida down, but he knows better than to blindly follow her instructions. As the banging on the door grows louder, Heimka decides to distract the others by going outside. Ida tries to stop her, but she has already unlocked the door, so he quickly hides behind a curtain. After several failed attempts, Masuzu and Chiwa finally enter the infirmary. But instead of finding Ida, they see Heimka naked and trying to cover herself with a blanket. Masuzu asks about Ida's whereabouts, but Heimka claims she doesn't know. Masuzu finds it hard to believe since Ida mentioned he was going to the infirmary to relax due to not feeling well. Heimka tries to explain that it was just the sound of the wind they heard. But Masuzu remains skeptical and questions why Heimka is naked. Heimka confesses that she had the chance to be intimate with her ex-boyfriend, which confirms to Masuzu that Ida is indeed present. She moves towards the curtain to check. The next day, a member of the disciplinary committee, A.I. Fayumi, asks Masuzu to disband her club. Masuzu refused the disbandment because there was no clear order from the disciplinary committee. Summer vacation arrives, and Ida joins a cram school held specifically for interested students. But there, he was put in the same class as A.I. Naturally, this makes AI very happy, and she starts trying to approach him. But because of her tsundere nature, her efforts failed miserably. After the cram school, Ada is forced by Masuzu to come somewhere as soon as possible. He came there as fast as lightning because he was still afraid she would spread his disgrace if he didn't hurry. Once they meet, Masuzu reveals her plan to him. She wants to take advantage of AI so that the club she built doesn't get disbanded. That way, their activities can continue. At the tutoring place, AI again approaches Ada, although she is still unaware of her shy nature. She was very happy when the food she made was praised by him. On that day, AI came home with a cheerful expression on her face. On a sunny day, Masuzu and Ida sat together, enjoying their drinks and discussing Ai's relationship status. Ida confirmed that AI had a partner, but Masuzu remained unsatisfied, insisting on seeing Ai's partner herself. Ida asked Masuzu to trust him for once, emphasizing that questioning AI endlessly would lead to no resolution. Masuzu apologized, attributing her lack of trust to her past as a pretender, which made it difficult for her to believe others. Ida reminded Masuzu that her struggle to trust didn't mean she couldn't believe in anything. The next day, Karu and AI invited Ida to watch the Han River fireworks display, but he declined, opting to study at the prep school's study hall. AI questioned his availability, and Ida inquired if she would be watching the fireworks with her boyfriend, catching her off guard. AI made excuses about having a date the following day since her boyfriend would be in Tokyo during the fireworks. Sensing the situation, Karu offered them tickets to see the Ashura fight movie, and they all agreed to go together. During a dinner with the club members, Masuzu devised a plan to uncover Ai's weakness. She suggested that Ida should date AI and make her fall in love with him, allowing them to manipulate her. Masuzu believed that if they couldn't find Ai's weakness, they should create one by making her cheat on her boyfriend. Masuzu envisioned using AI as their puppet to fulfill their desires. While discussing the plan, Masuzu included Chiwa in a double date with Karu, ensuring Ida would go on a date with AI, while Heimka and Masuzu would observe them, hoping to capture Ai's vulnerability. Hesitant, Heimka expressed loyalty to AI as her love mentor, but Masuzu assured her she didn't have to participate. The following day, Ida and Chiwa walked together when AI initiated a conversation, reminiscing about their time in kindergarten. Chiwa grew possessive, interrupting their interaction. Despite their plans, the date progressed without executing their agreement. 
Chiwa's interference continued, and Masuzu missed an opportunity by not taking photos in the movie theater. In the classroom, while organizing his bag, Ida notices a notebook. Curiosity gets the better of him, and he begins to open it. Suddenly, AI appears and stops him, accidentally knocking over Ida's bag in the process. Amidst the chaos, Ida quickly grabs the fallen notebook and rushes out of the room. Unbeknownst to AI, she mistakenly took Ida's bag instead of her own, which contains embarrassing written works she's too afraid to share, especially with Ida. Embarrassed, AI hastily returns to the room only to find Ida reading her notebook. Overwhelmed with shame, Ai's spirits plummet, and she rushes toward him. However, Ida, taken aback by her reaction, panics and flees the room. They end up running around until they both trip and fall. Concerned, Ida checks on AI and discovers her sobbing uncontrollably. She's devastated that Ida saw all her delusional poems in the notebook. Ida tries to console her by assuring her he won't mock someone else's fantasies. To make her feel better, he even shares his embarrassing daydreams. Surprisingly, this gesture lightens her mood. When AI returns the crumpled notebook to Ida, he feels remorseful for gripping it too tightly. He offers to give her money to buy a new one, but AI declines, requesting his company instead. Ida awaits her with a hat covering his face, assuming they're going to the hot river. However, AI leads him to a remote area they both find strangely familiar. As darkness envelops the place, fireflies begin to emerge. Suddenly, Ida recalls a massive cedar tree up the hill, where they can witness a breathtaking fireworks display. AI mentions that she discovered the spot because of Ida, using the nickname Takoon from their childhood. Memories from their time as kindergarten best friends flood Ida's mind, and he finally remembers AI. She had recognized him when she transferred to high school but never had a chance to reintroduce herself due to his close friendship with Chiwa. Unexpectedly, AI hands Ida a piece of paper, a marriage registration form they filled out as children 10 years ago. Ida had promised to put his stamp on it, but he hesitates, feeling overwhelmed by the suddenness of the situation and Ai's confession that she has a boyfriend. However, AI locks eyes with him and reveals that her relationship status was a lie, surprising Ida. AI informs them that their club might resume operations. She had requested the revocation of the club closure order, realizing that hastily labeling the club as dangerous was a mistake. AI believes that all they need is a leader to guide them in improving their understanding of love, and she volunteers herself for the role. Chiwa strongly opposes the idea, but she has no choice but to accept it. In the club room, Chiwa and AI have a strained relationship and constantly argue. Heimka asks Chiwa to stop yelling at AI, believing that AI could help them become more popular. Masuzu agrees, mentioning that Ai's wealthy and attractive boyfriend would make her an excellent coach. This surprises AI, prompting her to lie about having a relationship. To provoke a reaction, Masuzu encourages Ida to pretend to ask AI out. AI blushes and feigns disinterest, enjoying the idea of acting it out with Ida. However, when Ida gives up after being rejected, AI becomes irritated and warns Ida to let his feelings show if something like this happens again. Noticing the situation, Masuzu takes Ida's journal and asks him to use some of his 100% pure awesome from concentrate pickup lines. Reluctant at first, Ida agrees under Masuzu's threat. AI appears to be captivated by his strange behavior and pickup lines, even going as far as hugging him and claiming they are already in a relationship planning to marry after graduation. The other club members react negatively, and Ida encourages AI to calm down and behave appropriately. AI suddenly snaps back to reality, insisting she was only pretending to be seduced, but the others doubt her sincerity. Masuzu asks Ida to do it again, and he complies. AI acts annoyed by the display, and Chiwa intervenes by pulling them apart, causing Ida to fall to the floor. AI warns Chiwa about her dangerous actions, but Chiwa defends herself, believing that AI, as Ida's childhood friend, should ask for permission. In a surprising twist, AI reveals that she, too, is Ida's childhood friend, having known him for 10 years since they were in kindergarten. This revelation breaks Chiwa's heart. Chiwa and Ida are discussing their club's summer trip when Chiwa suddenly feels unwell and goes to the bathroom. Ida follows her and asks what's wrong. At first, Chiwa brushes it off, but Ida sees through her and comforts her. He explains that the length of their friendship is what matters, not who knew him first, dispelling her sadness. Later, Ida asks Masuzu for permission to accompany Chiwa to shop for swimsuits. Surprisingly, Masuzu agrees, acknowledging that Ida's childhood friends hold a special place in his life that she can't compete with. The next day, Ida and Chiwa meet, 
and Masuzu unexpectedly joins them, leading to an argument between Chiwa and Masuzu. Heinka and AI observe the argument from a distance. Heinka takes Ida into a fitting room, while AI pulls him out of the store to watch her try on a wedding dress. They decide that Ida will spend equal time with each of them to be fair. The plan works, and they continue their shopping. On the way home, Ida notices Masuzu's silence and asks her about it. She confesses that she feels left out because she lacks memories of him like the others do. Ida reassures her and promises to create new memories together from that point onward. As the sun begins to set on their journey home, they spot Ida's aunt, Siko, approaching them. She greets them and they introduce themselves in return. Suddenly, Siko surprises them all by asking who among them is Ida's lover. Masuzu steps forward confidently, introducing herself as his girlfriend. However, Siko bursts into laughter, clarifying that she wasn't referring to the fake girlfriend, leaving the others bewildered. Hamiko and Chiwa exchange surprised glances as Siko unexpectedly dozes off. Back at Ida's house, they start discussing their upcoming beach trip and how to gather funds for it. Siko suggests that they could participate in a contest organized by their company, which would grant them access to the company's health resort facilities near the beach. Upon hearing this, Masuzu wonders why she wasn't invited to join the contest, considering she also loves Ida. Siko explains that she excluded Masuzu based on her intuition mentioning that being a video game creator has sharpened her skills in identifying and creating different characters, including identifying people in love. However, Masuzu refuses to back down and insists that she is truly in love with Ida. Siko decides to test her claim, together with AI, Chiwa, and Hemika. They all answer a series of questions on an app, with the one who scores the highest deemed the most in love with Ida. After completing the questions, it is revealed that AI achieves the highest score, while Masuzu ends up with the lowest. Masuzu's answers were so perfect that it almost felt like she wasn't in love at all. Despite this, she remains determined to make Siko believe that she is Ida's girlfriend and deeply in love with him. Siko challenges her further, inviting her to join the contest, stating that if she wins, she will acknowledge her as Ida's girlfriend. Later that night, Masuzu and Ida find themselves wandering around the children's park, discussing how easily Siko can discern the authenticity of their relationship. Although their confidence wavers when Siko detects any insincerity, they remain determined to work harder and win the contest to finally gain Siko's recognition of Masuzu as Ida's girlfriend. Ida and Masuzu are putting on a show of being a couple on the train, but their club members can tell it's just an act. They don't look natural and seem awkward. When they arrive, they are greeted by a beautiful blue beach where they can enjoy some fun water sports. After having a great time at the beach, they head to the house they will be staying in. While Ida is fixing a light bulb, he overhears AI telling Masuzu that she will never forgive her if she is only pretending to date Ida to ward off other guys' advances. This worries Ida, thinking about how their friends might react to Masuzu. Ida and Masuzu come up with a plan to make their friends believe they are dating. Masuzu suggests doing something intense, like kissing, but Ida is unsure about the plan and gives him the freedom to back out. Eventually, Ida agrees to help Masuzu, and they plan to say goodnight and kiss each other when they are about to go to sleep. Ida, Masuzu, Chiwa, AI, and Heimka are playing cards when Ida suddenly announces that he is going to bed. Before they all go to bed, Chiwa gives them a phone strap as a gift. It turns out that AI, Heimka, and Chiwa plan to make matching phone straps for everyone which touches Ida because they were all rivals when it came to him. In the bedroom, Masuzu and Ida have a conversation. After reflecting on their situation, Masuzu considers withdrawing from the contest because she knows she can't win against the others, but she also thinks about how they would feel. She decides to participate and face whatever the outcome may be. She can't give up, thinking about how it would sadden Chiwa to lose him. Suddenly, she grabs Ida's journal and shows him the part where he wrote, he will become a doctor and heal Chiwa. Once the trip is over, Masuzu plans to let him go and return him to Chiwa. Mana and Masuzu are on a club trip when a woman riding a bicycle accidentally hits them. Mana asks Masuzu if her sister is with them, and Masuzu reveals that she is merely an accessory for their father to show off to his high society. Masuzu behaves exactly as her father expects, but in doing so, she tricked herself into forgetting who she truly is. Mana then tells Ida that Masuzu can say some crazy things. She can be harsh, then nice, and then become cold, stringing him along at times too. However, despite being strung along, Ida doesn't think it's so bad. It's not like an everyday chore. Upon hearing this, Mana stands up and thanks Ida for coming to like her sister. Heimka is experiencing stage fright and is scared to go on stage. Ida advises her to do something she enjoys to overcome her fear. Emiko hugs Ida and confesses her feelings for him. 
She explains that she has changed since knowing him and has been able to interact with classmates, make friends, and even go to the beach. As the crowd begins to cheer for them, it is revealed that they are being filmed and shown on a monitor. So in the afternoon, Masuzu unexpectedly took part in a love confession festival held by the beach. She wanted to use that moment to end the fake relationship with Ida. Knowing what Masuzu was going to do, Ada immediately goes to stop her. Luckily, he arrives just as she was about to reveal the truth on stage. And with that, he entered the stage and confessed his feelings to her. He loves Mesuzu with all her flaws, and even for Ida, no one could be her companion except him. A love confession marks the end of the pretense in Ada and Mesuzu's relationship. The next morning, Ida wakes up to find Mesuzu sitting on top of him, acting affectionate and clingy. Sayako asks Ida to go out with her and they discuss his current situation. Sayako gives him advice, suggesting that he should make everyone except his girlfriend hate him. Ida attempts to do this by talking to Heimke first but fails. He then approaches AI intending to make her hate him. He asks to see their marriage certificate and plans to tear it up, but when he sees Ai's expression, he can't bring himself to do it. Suddenly, he accidentally gets a paper cut and blood stains the paper, causing AI to mistake it as him stamping the certificate and agreeing to the marriage. Ida finds Chiwa on the balcony, looking out at the sea. He asks her if she is upset about him being with Masuzu, and she sheds a few tears. Ida tries to console her, and Chiwa turns around, kisses him, and confesses her love. Masuzu suddenly appears and asks if she can join in. The episode concludes with Ida feeling frustrated and torn between his girlfriend and his childhood best friend.